Hey, Mark Warnke here, packouts.com. Hey, you guys, I got kind of a unique situation, and I really like to show the organic nature of raising babies because sometimes it takes super creative thought, and um, it's really hard to identify what's happening sometimes. And so this little goat right here that's jumping around and playing, literally, we thought he was going to die six days ago, six to seven days ago, he was on the edge of death. And we have been struggling and throwing the kitchen sink at him for six days, seven days. And we were treating him before that. So we've been throwing the kitchen sink at this goat for like almost two weeks now. All of us have been rooting for him and we're so excited to see he's better. Now I wanna tell you our process. So what we noticed was lethargy. We noticed a, a um, intermittent willingness to eat. He in fact is still that way. He had a bloated stomach um, and you could tell he just didn't feel well and his bleat sounded weird. It continued to get worse. We assumed coccidia. We assumed uh, the possibility of goat polio and we assumed the possibility of a uh, hypocalcemia. Um, and so we treated for all of those and we were treating for all of those um, on like a, a non-severe level. What I mean by that is, is that we weren't hyperdosing him. And one of the things that we didn't hyperdose was vitamin B. And so I then said, okay, we need to hyperdose everything and see. So we made sure he was on sulfa to clear out of the coccidia. That didn't work. And that was my number one guess, but especially because of his unwillingness to eat. Um, number two was we did um, some PMK. Um, that's this right here. Um, so that's going to put sugar and calcium and all kind of the minerals into a system. We were feeding that in a bottle and we were drenching with it as well. The interesting part about that drenching process is not unlike a lot of goats that I see that we try to tube, which I almost swear off now is a form of treatment, is that the tubing process is so impactful on their well-being that they, I've seen them give up on it. The, the tube down the throat and all that stuff. They, I've literally seen that like turn the lights out on their will. And so I hate doing that kind of stuff. And he reacted to the drenching with PMK. Similarly, he, you could see it literally like crushed his spirit. Um, and so we gave him some of that, but he wasn't reacting positively. And then I told Trisha, I was like, Trisha, I think we've been just treating him primarily for the goat polio with vitamin B paste as a could it be this and he's never really responded i wonder if we give him some injections but it wasn't really showing his goat polio other than i saw one little weird hind end stumble a couple of times but it was so low level that the vitamin b paste should have worked to, to do it so i said i wonder if he's experiencing like he can't quite get over the hump on on goat polio let's see let's give him some injections so that day we gave him three three milliliter injections of vitamin B uh, injectable, which is just a simple cattle, cattle injectable that, that has thiamine in it. And um, <laughs> I know I have an open needle in here now that I just grabbed that cover. <laughs> so uh, we gave him simple um, injectable and um, we gave it to him three times that day and he responded. Now the interesting part is he was displaying a characteristic to goat polio that I've never seen before, which was this huge bloated distended belly. He, and, and, and there is a dietary aspect to how goat polio affects their system. And, and I've never dealt with that side of it, but that swelling started to go down. He started to normalize. He's still not fully recovered. When you have a case of goat polio that extends this time, our research shows that it takes like multiple injections, straight thiamine and or vitamin B complex, which is a most much lower level in their system that you have to give for weeks every time, uh, multiple times a day until they fully recover and then dose beyond that a few days and then keep an eye on them to make sure they don't regress. So this little goat just taught us an enormous amount about goat polio and its complexity, but that's what it was, you guys. After all this and a couple of weeks of troubleshooting, luckily we were giving paste and paste probably was keeping him just enough to where he was staying alive, but he couldn't get over the hump. And until we went to injectable and big doses and lots of it, like I said, hyperdosing, 
all of a sudden now we got this little guy that his lights are on, his, his, his glass had shown, was gone in his eyes. He was, he was really, really struggling. And again, six or seven days ago, we thought we were gonna lose him that night. I'm surprised he made it that night, um, but he did and here he is. And you know, this guessing game of figuring out what's going on with your goats. And then I just kind of wanted to share that process with you. So I hope you find that helpful. Remember, if you like our videos, click to subscribe, leave comments, but as well, keep in mind that um, we have a goat club membership where you get a look over my shoulder and watch goats be raised on a moment by moment basis in situations like this. You also um, have courses on how to raise a baby goat, um, how to milk a goat, running pack goats, uh, all how to help a goat have a baby. All our courses are here to help you. I'm not a vet, I'm just a goat owner, longtime goat owner that has the, the willingness to share the strategies that we use here on our farm and that we found that works over time. So I hope you find that helpful. Mark Mortkey, the goat guy, signing out.